In case you aren't familiar, there is a whole nother awesome online practice war game in cybersecurity range where you get to practice not just the red team ethical hacking penetration testing stuff, but even the blue team. The defense, the protection, all the security mechanisms that make for cybersecurity in our industry's landscape. In this video, we're going to set up our account and solve one of the challenges from Blue Team Labs Online. In your URL and the address bar in your browser, that is blueteamlabs.online, and it is a gamified platform for defenders to practice their skills in security investigations and challenges covering instant response, digital forensics, security operations, reverse engineering, and threat hunting. Now, if you're not tracking, all of those things are awesome for your career and actually getting your foot in the door for a job within cybersecurity. So I'm going to go ahead and click register for free and we'll start a new account. My display name can just be John Hammond YT for YouTube. There is a super quick email verification, but I'll knock that out and we'll get back to it. Okay, now I have the account verified. We are logged in and we have a little bit of a banner or a little modal that pops up that says, look, hey, just for technicality's sake, all that administrative in the Blue Team Labs online war game, I will not share access to my account. I will not share answers. I will not post write-ups or guides of non-retired content. Note this is a sort of a hack the box style and that, okay, there are some of the main featured challenges and tasks, but the retired content has been out for so long that it's totally a-okay and kosher to share some of the solutions and write-ups. Scrolling down, I'm totally good with all that. Let me hit agree and we can get started here. Let's go take a look at some of the challenges that are free and freely accessible for just about anyone. Now, if I scroll down here, we can actually toggle on only the retired things or what I want to be able to see available to us. And this one looked interesting to me. It is memory analysis within ransomware. It's a uh, digital forensics, 20 points of medium difficulty, and we could learn something new with some of that. Let me go ahead and start that challenge. Scrolling down here, looks like we have a little bit of a scenario and some background. The account executive called the SOC earlier, the Security Operations Center, and he sounded very frustrated and angry. He stated he couldn't access any files on his computer, and he kept receiving a pop-up saying that his files had been encrypted. You disconnected the computer from the network and extracted the memory dump of his machine and started analyzing it with volatility. Ooh, one of the cool tools to be able to do some memory analysis. Let's continue our investigation to uncover how the ransomware works and how we might be able to stop it. So over on the right hand side, there are a couple tasks or things that we might be able to investigate, find out, fill in. And we do have a file that we could download between the memory dump and the password to extract the archive. Let me go ahead and click download. Let's save this super quick. Sorry, before we go too far. Hey, did you see that like yellow orange looking banner at the very top of the blueteamlabs.online website? That is a little announcement, little shoutcast, little love for SciSec Careers, one of the new premier platforms that Security Blue Team is putting out here. And if you don't mind, I'd love to chat a little bit about it and celebrate their support as today's sponsor. Huge thanks to Security Blue Team. Security Blue Team, the brains behind the defensive certifications Blue Team Level 1 and 2, and the popular training pathway Blue Team Junior Analyst, has just launched a brand new career platform called SciSec Careers. Designed to help both offensive and defensive security professionals find their next role while giving recruiters and managers a platform to find top talent, SciSec Careers aims to break down the barriers to recruitment within a competitive and sometimes tricky to navigate industry. The idea behind SciSec is that it's a mutually beneficial place for companies and candidates to connect. Transparency is at the heart of the platform with all job listings requiring compensation information. In a challenging job market, the issue of putting salaries in job adverts can be a divisive one. However, the team behind SciSec Careers felt that the openness was the best policy, especially as the lack of salary is a common frustration among candidates. Ultimately, the platform is a win-win. Candidates can apply exclusively to the roles that meet the requirements, while organizations are able to quickly and effectively identify the right talent for their teams. It's a low-cost, high-reward recruitment solution. And right now, it is completely free for recruiters and employers to add job listings. SciSec Careers is a platform created for the industry by the industry. And you can try it out right now with my link below in the video description. Huge thanks to Security Blue Team for sponsoring this video.
Now, I know we're gonna get into volatility. If you aren't familiar, volatility is an open source command line utility that has lots of plugins and profiles and features and functionality to be able to rapidly do memory analysis given a memory sample of a live computer machine. Volatility is just about always being updated. I believe it's still maintained and a lot of the core developers are great friends of mine. Even one of them is my boss for my day job at work. <laughs> so let me hop on over to the Volatility Foundation. Let me grab the downloads button here and we can grab, I believe, Volatility 3. Like there's nothing wrong with that, right? Sounds like a bigger number, sounds like the latest release. So let's go grab the source code and that was released in April of 2023. So that works just fine. Yeah, Volatility 3 version 2.4.1. Let's go ahead and grab the source code dot zip is fine with me. I'll go ahead and save that. And now I am as usual inside of my Remnux virtual machine. Uh, we can go ahead and move into opt because I believe we can just go ahead and make a directory for volatility. Nothing wrong with that. Let's move into that directory and then let's grab from the downloads our volatility zip file. I guess it just put it in my home directory. Let me go ahead and unzip that directory. There it all is. And that stored it just fine in volatility 3.2. Whatever. My face is in the way, but if we move everything from that volatility directory into this location, then we should have everything that we're working with, like our vol.py. Can I now just run my Python 3 vol.py tack h? Volatility, there it is. Here, I piped it to less so we can read it. Here is a Volatility 3 framework, 2.4.1. Now, fingers crossed, all the syntax that we see in our Blue Team Labs exercise will still work with the syntax and semantics for this version of Volatility. Now, the syntax with running Volatility is giving it the file with tack F. So we'll supply the infected.vmm file, but they already tell us that the profile for this memory image is just Windows 7, Service Pack 1, 32-bit x86. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you can use some of the plugins, features, and functionality of volatility to try and determine, okay, what am I actually looking at here? What's the most likely profile for this memory sample? And the way that we could determine how else we're going to be navigating around all the investigation that we do, you need to uncover the profile and basically use that all the time when you're using volatility. So I went ahead and moved the infected.vmem file into just this BTLO folder, if just so my bash prompt isn't as long, because we'll ultimately, of course, run our Python volatility vol.py, and then we'll need to use our tack f on our infected.vmem. And the function or the profile that we could use, I believe is image info, is that right? Oh no, okay, that throws a little bit of an error and gives me all of the help information one more time, but it notes that the plugin that we might wanna use is actually not anywhere related to what I tried to use. Image info is not going to work, and it looks like all of these have a unique sort of style now. Maybe this is some new efforts in the latest volatility framework where you could denote, okay, the profile or the operating system, what you're digging into, Linux or Mac, and then Windows dot something, and then the thing that you want to do with it. Uh, in this case, I see that Windows uh, PS scan processes that we might be able to look through. And I believe that's what the Blue Team Labs was asking us to try to do. But now we'll need to use a little bit of a different syntax. I still want to figure out how we can get the profile though. Ooh, I was doing some super quick Googling around uh, and I thought I found, take a look at this blog. This is Ashley Pearson, a basic D for blog, uh, chatting about the Volatility 3 cheat sheet, comparing commands from Volatility 2 to Volatility 3. Now note, uh, probably this Blue Team Labs Online uh, rendition, that lab, that exercise was written with Blue Team uh, thinking let's use Volatility 2. But uh, I went ahead and pulled the trigger, hey, let's use Volatility 3, so we're gonna have to use something different. And getting image info, like I would have knee-jerk reaction thought to do, is actually windows.info in Volatility 3. Uh, and these are the things that they're suggesting just as well for getting processes. Volatility 3 is using something different. All right, so let's try that command again. Can I just simply use now windows.info? Does that need a little sub thing? Oh, no, no, it's tracking it down. It's looking. Volatility 3 is doing its magic, and there's a heck of a lot of stuff that's trying to download. Oh, my lord. I'm ruining my terminal. <laughs> Okay, it dug out some info here, was able to get the major minor version, find the NT system root, find the kernel base. But I believe it it sounds like from what I'm trying to understand, Volatility 3 will actually download the symbols and actually just keep track of it for you. So that way you don't exactly need to worry about specifying the profile every time. Yeah, because actually looking back at Ashley's uh, blog and article of the comparison, you don't even specify the profile. You just know based off the symbols that it is downloaded and now we could try to find windows.psscan. Let's try it. So let's go ahead and use our exact same uh, setup
up before, but let's use windows.psscan, denoting that as the pro plugin to run, and let's see if it churns anything out. Okay, it's got to scan a little bit, but then it will start to churn out all of the processes that it could see running in memory, and all of these executables are the .exes and given their names. Uh, there are a couple weird ones that I already see here. Wanna decryptor, right? Maybe a reference to WannaCry. This or4qtckt.exe. That does look like a suspicious executable name, so let's try and go and submit that to our Blue Team Labs Online checkbox here. And that is the wrong one. What? That still looks pretty sketch, though. <laughs> Are you talking about at wanna decryptor? Because that doesn't have like a .exe name of it. Is that the process that you're looking for? Okay. What is the parent process ID for the suspicious process? So it does list out the process ID and the parent process ID in this output. Uh, in this listing here, you can actually scroll up and see like what makes for the headers. PPID or the parent process ID is the second column vertically. So if we're looking at our wanna decryptor, that should have the parent ID of 2372, correct? Let's try that. Looking good. What is the initial malicious executable that created this process? Okay, that is our OR4QTCKT.exe. That is the oddball weird one, and that's why it kind of stuck out right to me. But you can see the process ID 2732 matches our parent process ID from our wanna decryptor 2732. So this should now finally be the answer that we're looking for. Let's submit that. If you drill down on that suspicious PID using volatility, knowing the profile for volatility 2, PS scan grep pid here, you can find the process used to delete files, like just piping this to grep with our 2732 process ID. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. There are a couple of weird ones. Because again, the there is a parent ID of taskdl.exe. Is that going to be used to delete files though? Because wanted a cryptor, wanted a cryptor, and then the actual maybe initial staging malware. Should we just try that taskdl.exe? If I Google, is that like a like lol bin? Taskdl actively raises detections, so it's like a known malware based off of okay, wanna cry, likely the ransomware wanna cry. That's gotta be it then, at least just off based off of some quick research. There it is. Find the path where the malicious file was first executed. So looking at our or4qtckt.exe, we're trying to understand and learn a little bit more about that one. Can I use like a uh, Windows command line or cmd.line? Will that be able to tell me how that orqt thing ran? There it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a look. OR4QT say QT for our 2732 process ID actually ran right from the actual absolute path. C users, hacker, desktop, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so our hacker is our nefarious user here. Let's go ahead and submit that. Let's copy and paste that in. Can you identify what ransomware it is? Okay, so that was just a little bit of our uh, Googling, but that should be the WannaCry ransomware, correct? What is the file name for the file with the ransomware public key that was used to encrypt the private key? We're looking for a .eky extension. Uh, should that just be some like open handles for the file that we saw running? How can I find that with volatility? Uh, Windows handles, tac tac pid. So maybe that's it. Is that genuinely just like trying to find an open handle? Uh, let's try Windows, and I'll bring that onto a new line. Handles TAC P2732. As we know, that is our malicious PID. Oh, you need TAC TAC PID. Whatever. You're fine. Okay, now that will carve through it, but that is not super duper useful. Uh, it's giving me registry keys. Oh, Wait a second, one of these is worthwhile because they're a file and it tells you like kind of the type of the handle that has open or whatever thing it's actually working with or accessing. So device hard disk volume one is going to refer to our C drive. Like you can tell, especially because of the remaining file path, the absolute path there. So that C colon backslash users hacker desktop 0000 EKY. And that must be our key, so to speak. Uh, that is the only file one that I see open other than uh, some other stuff. Uh, we could lurk for a file if we really needed to. We could grep this output again, but I think we're good. Like, let's go back to Blue Team Labs Online and let's look for our C colon backslash. But I guess you just need the file name, don't you? You don't need the absolute path. So let's submit this. And then we did it. And then we're done. <laughs> Congratulations! You completed the memory analysis ransomware task. Super cool! That was nice. That was a little bit of fun. And look, I got to learn uh, more about Volatility 3 because I have not used that 
honestly often. I would have just like copy and pasted, quick press the easy button for our volatility two syntax, but using volatility three and getting a little bit of uh, some other knowledge from going to see what Ashley or others have been writing about to get this cheat sheet, to get basic DFIR, digital forensics and incident response blogs going, that is how we all get better. Hey, thanks so much for watching, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something new, got to play with volatility, maybe got to level up. Finally got to use volatility three rather than volatility two. And hey, check out Blue Team Labs online. It is something that's another uh, platform and war game provided by Security Blue Team. And if you haven't, please go take a look at their awesome sponsor work with SciSec Careers. SciSec.careers if you want to go straight to the page, but there is my link below in the video description if you want to spend some love and get a new career, get a new job within cybersecurity. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, YouTube algorithm things. I'll see you in the next video.